case you guys don't know, I'm still doing the Star Wars Day celebration. It's a little late, but I'm still going to finish the reviews today. This is for Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And for just like all the other prequels, it was written and directed by George Lucas. Stars in... It follows 10 years, I think 10 years after the events of the first movie where Padme is a senator and it, there's a speculation going on over an assembling of a clone army and possibly of a battle between the droids and the clones, from what I believe. I don't know, there's also politics are there again. And to be honest, I just didn't care about this movie. Didn't care, it was, I, I thought it was a little better than the first one. However, episode one is a major was a major love for the series because mostly Jar Jar Banks, but also had a politics storyline that really just wasn't exciting. It just didn't feel like Star Wars. The dialogue was god awful. Such a talented cast like Ewan McGregor, Liam Neeson, Samuel L. Jackson, or Natalie Portman were just wasted, and it used a lot of kid actors. The second one is no exception. There's a lot of kid actors. However, there are some teenager actors, such as Jake Lloyd, who played Anakin in the first in Episode One. This time he's replaced by Hayden Christensen, who is not, not any better. He's just like Hayden Christensen's portrayal of Anakin is just god awful. He his lines are so bad, his line delivery is terrible, and he's also just a whiny bitch throughout the rest of the movie. It's just impossible to stand him. But to be honest, it's not all his fault. George Lucas approved of these performances, and also he wrote the dialogue. Okay, there's also there's actually another writer involved in the movie, Jonathan Hales, I believe is pronounce his name. Comment below. Jonathan Hales, yeah. Yeah, he did some work on the script too, and to be honest, it's not all that great. It's ridiculous. There are some cool fight sequences as usual. There are some good effects, although they do look dated today, and you can really tell that they're CGI. They still look nice though. And uh, the fight sequences, there's like this balance I call scene with all the Jedi's, and it was pretty fun to watch. And, uh,. It was really enjoyable to watch. Also, the score of John Williams is still good. Still has a few standout scenes. And, uh... That's kind of really all I can say. It's positive about this movie. There's a lot of CGI, as usual. They overuse it so much, which is a main problem with the prequels. Also, the, the acting is not very good. Ewan McGregor, I think, does okay. Natalie Portman is improving, but she still kind of sucks. Hank Christian, like I said, he comes off as a whiny bitch, and he's so unlikable as Anakin. It's ridiculous. I mean, are we supposed to stand this? Are we supposed to sympathize with him, feel sorry for him? Because to be honest, what we... And also, according to the original A New Hope, Alec Guinness said that Obi-Wan was a... that Anakin was a good friend. The problem is, is that they're so distant from each other in this movie. Like, they are just constantly bigger with each other, and they really just seem like enemies. It's just impossible to for them to be... to function together as a unit. There are also a few scenes I found stupid, such as, like, there's an attempted assassination on Padme. Like, there's a guy called Django Fett who hires someone who is a bounty hunter, and he hires someone else to do it, who then hires a droid who does these things, like, involving, like, uh, worms or something. They're supposed to kill her, and it fails. Seriously, are you fucking kidding me? Are you that lazy, Lucas? The movie also becomes a little bit ridiculous and over the top, especially by the first one standards. There's a couple scenes I found a little bit over the top and ridiculous, but, you know, there's still some entertainment value to behold. Like, these movies aren't god-awful, but there is entertainment value. But they're not all that great in terms of the writing, directing, acting, and uh, stories. And also, like, Jar Jar Binks, he doesn't have a bigger role. It's a little better because Jar Jar Binks is not all that annoying because he doesn't have a huge part in this movie. But he does do one thing that got that undeniably makes me. Un, that's just undeniably the reason why he's one of the most hated characters in film history, if not the most. He does like he takes over for Padme for some of the for some of the political proceedings for the Galact for the Senate, and he approves of this movement, which transfers all power to Chancellor Palpatine. And unfortunately, this causes Palpatine, like Palpatine. And of course, you guys all know how this is going for. Like, it's going to cause him to have all the power, and then of course, start the evil Galactic Empire. So that's the reason why people hate him so much, because he kind of was one of the main reasons why Palpatine became incredibly powerful, and of course, why the Sith started taking over. 
seriously, he's not, just, not only because he's a moron, he's also just annoying and kind of a burden. It's just that. This movie also still has incredibly bad dialogue. It's ridiculous, so many bad lines, especially when it comes to this romance between Anakin and Padme. That just is not existent because these guys have no chemistry together. It's just so awkward. The dialogue they say is so cheesy and it's so, so cringeworthy. You seriously can't sustain yourself and you almost want to hurt yourself, like shoot yourself just watching that. I mean, my God, seriously? Yeah, I actually wasn't really looking forward to this movie when I watched it on my, like, I mean, I own the entire trilogy. Everybody, any Star Wars fan has. They own all kinds of editions, special editions, even good and the bad ones. But, uh, biggest problem I have with the movies is that they're not very fun. I mean, uh, the movies is that they have bad storylines. The prequels. They use CGI a lot, and sometimes it looks nice, but of course, it is becoming dated. And they do so, the action scenes are cool. There's actually a cool lightsaber battle between like uh, Anakin and Count Dooku that's good. To be honest, I think this is the only time the actors ever show anything convincing is really during the action sequences. But there's a lot of CGI used. Even on C3PO, which I thought was a little bit ridiculous, but whatever. There's still some great eye candy to behold. They also have more action in this than the than episode one, which I think is the reason why I kind of liked it a little better because it was very it was more entertaining. But I didn't really like it because it was very disappointing. Because not only the kid actor is terrible, and the movie overall just suffers from a lot of problems with its characters, and just doesn't really satisfy in terms of storytelling, and of course, really much as of course of being because this is no longer Star Wars. It's just a joke. It's like a Hollywood action film with the Star Wars license. They kind of want to break something right now because of that. I mean, the fact that George Lucas almost completely ruined his entire series. Okay, luckily J.J. Abrams could restore that reputation. Also, I heard that Star Wars The Clone Wars, the TV series, also brought that back, but I have no idea. I don't really recommend you guys watch this because the dialogue is so bad. The actors are struggling to sustain themselves and ever and give off any sort of convincing performance with the lines. The story is once again driven by politics again. It's now that it has more action, so there's more entertaining value, but still, it just doesn't really have the same feeling as the original Star Wars. Yeah. Maybe like a two and a half out of five, maybe even three out of five. It's being a little nice, but I did find a lot of entertainment value, just like in episode one. That's my review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, I hope and get ready for episode three because actually there's something about, there's a lot more to love than hate in that movie. Okay, there's like, yeah. And it's going to end just the end of my opinions on the overall prequels. This is going to, it's going to, I hope to end off Star Wars Day on a good note. And this movie, I think, will end it as well. Comment below, subscribe, comment below what you thought of episode two. Do you think it was better than episode one? Do you think it was worse? Or no? Actually, Mark from, Mark from Fanboy Flix says that episode two is the worst of prequels because there was no real improvement. Yeah, I kind of agree, but I don't think it's the worst. I found more fun in it. But yeah, they didn't really improve on anything. It was just, just as bad as the first. A little bit better, but still kind of bad. Subscribe to my channel and get ready for episode three.